<laughs> How's everybody doing today? Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Are we ready to have some fun? Learn some good stuff. I like what Dan was sharing too. Is like I said, talking about different groups. I, I get to speak in front of the groups of three and four hundred, and I get to speak in front of the groups of about twenty or thirty. And he's right. I like the smaller groups because I can get a little more interactive with y'all, and, and uh, we can learn about some more stuff together. Like Dan said, I was supposed to stay and join you all for dinner tonight, but my twelve-year-old daughter is doing two solos tomorrow in Phoenix. So guess what? Daddy has to take a plane out <laughs> at seven ten out of LAX. So guess what? At 4 o'clock, we're done. Or at least I'm out of here. You can stay. So, like he said, if you have any questions along the way, please, by all means, ask. I'll be happy to answer them. All this content I created, I know it like the back of my hand. What I'm going to do today, and one thing I want to say, that, first of all, too, is I want all of you to relax. I know many of you have been to different workshops, seminars, different things like that, where they sell stuff, programs, books, tapes, whatever it is. There's nothing for sale today, folks. Okay? <laughs> All right. I'm not selling anything today. This is purely educational. I'm going to recommend some books for you to read. I'm going to recommend some websites for you to go to and that type of thing. But there's nothing for sale. And the reason that that is the case is because I'm going to educate you on a, on a concept that the wealthy use primarily called your personal bank. Anybody familiar with infinite banking, be your own bank, your personal bank, any of those kinds of things? A couple of folks. Did it, was anybody here last year when Vimal... Patel shared some of that with you. I'm just curious. Okay, a couple of you. Um, I taught and trained Vimal. He's a great guy, works for us on our agency. And I'm here this today because Dan reached out to me a few months ago and said, hey, would you come out and speak for us this time? I couldn't last year because I was in, uh, in Sweden. So uh, on vacation with the family. So I felt bad. I said, yeah, I didn't have any uh, speaking engagements this year in February. I don't like to go more somewhere more than once a month. I used to travel and do that a lot more. But with business and family and everything else, you know what? I'm doing this stuff too. I'm not just a speaker. I have a business. I, I have a life, right? So I try to limit this to once a, once a month going somewhere. Um, but why, why I'm sharing this is the personal bank concept changed, is, has changed my life, my family's life, our financial situation, all those kinds of things. And I'm just sharing with you what happened to us and what we, what, what, uh, where we're going. And we've shared with now hundreds of clients over the last five, six years now. And it's exploded into, I'm sharing this word of mouth. There's been no advertising at various different investor groups, real estate investment groups, all over the Western US, actually. And it just keeps exploding. I just got another, I'll be in Seattle now, I found out yesterday in, uh, in April. Another group has reached out to me and said, hey, we heard about you speaking to this group. Would you come speak to us? So it's kind of getting fun. I'm having fun with this. Now, I want to tell you a little bit my back, my background. I'm a financial guy. In fact, this is, this is our company. We have over 5,000 clients since 96. In the financial industry, that's a really, really big number. Um, most financial advisors have a handful of clients, literally. Um, what we do, we dramatically enhance the financial trajectory of individuals, businesses, and families. Okay? We don't make a small difference. Typically, we make a very big difference for most people. We work primarily with entrepreneurs, investors, and professionals. That's our focus. You guys fit right into that. And what we do is we multiply growth, minimize market risk, minimize taxes, and show you how to gain control and access of your money. Okay? Because most of you don't have that control and access. Anybody heard of an IRA? Yeah. Do you have control of that? No, you don't. I'll teach you where you don't. I'll show you that. <laughs> How we do it? Client primacy principle. First, last, every priority is, is designed to enhance the client's situation. I teach my agents this all the time. You take care of the clients to take care of you. It's worked for 22 years, and our business grows every year, and our agency is the fastest growing agency in the country the last four years in a row. Okay? We're working on the fifth year in a row. By the way, that gets harder to do each year. <laughs> so, it's just taking care of folks. It's that simple. Comprehensive holistic approach. We review the financial, legal, tax risks with our strategic partners, which do include all types of attorneys, CPAs. Our asset protection attorney, for example, worked with the last three U.S. presidents. Uh, we don't mess around. Okay. So we're gonna, if I don't know the answer, I can find somebody who will. Okay. And get you what you need. How we do it? We create tax-free income, eliminate market risk, and manage your personal bank. That's what I'm going to focus on today. We're at 15th year rate of the BBB. Proud of that. There's me with a tie. I wear ties for a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up on those a few years ago. <laughs> 
but that I've been speaking now for the last five or six years, 20, owned several businesses. I'm, I'm not your typical financial guy. I'm a business owner. I own the agency. I'm a serial entrepreneur. What can I say? I've owned a retail business. I've owned a service company. I own this agency. I'm a real estate, I have been a real estate investor since 01. Okay? Um, I get it. And I get a lot of these financial guys, yes. Are you an agent or a broker? Nope. I'm just an investor. <laughs> I don't want to. What's that? It can be done. Absolutely. In fact, uh, I'll tell you, I was, we, in 01, uh, we were, it was interesting. Saw the, saw the accountant, he says, you're making too much money, you're going to get creamed on taxes, you need some write-offs. And I, he, I said to him, this is how I got into real estate. He goes, well, you need some write-offs. I said, okay, what do you recommend? He says, well, real estate's got a lot of write-offs. And go and behold, that night, we're watching TV, and there's a Carlton Sheets advertisement for one of his books. So my wife's like, that sounds interesting. We buy the book, read it on lease options, and then we went out and bought our first property. And then over the next three years, we bought 32 more. And they were all lease options. And we did three-year lease options because why? That's what the book said to do. I didn't have any mentors. We didn't have anybody to talk to. We just followed what the book said. Another reason why I'm a really huge fan of, of real estate investment groups, you have some folks here like Dan and other folks in the room who have experience and knowledge you don't have. I wish I'd known about that in 2001. How about 2008? I was in Phoenix, folks. What do you think happened? Because what happened was we kept buying and stuff, and then we got these properties back. Because guess what I found out? Most people who have bad credit, three years later, still have bad credit, don't they? So we started getting these properties back. Now, what in 01 to 04, what do property values do in Phoenix? And pretty much everywhere. Went up. So we started getting these properties back. And we're like, well, we can sell them, make $30,000, $40,000 profit per property at that time, net of all fees. Or we could re-rent them or release them for make three, four hundred dollars net profit per month. Well, I'm greedy. What am I going to do? Take the thirty, forty thousand. And our real estate agent, who had helped us get a lot of these properties, said, "Hey, I've got an opportunity here. You can buy ten acres, build five. Got a contractor. You build five houses, bring in the roads, the wells, and all that." So we did it. <clears throat> made eighty-five percent on our money in a year. And then I made a statement that was later fate fatal. I said, wow, that was easy, let's do it again. <laughs> this is 05. So we buy five more acres in North Scottsdale. We build three or four more houses. We buy three more acres next door, getting ready to build some more. And then the prices of everything now are getting so crazy that I say to my wife, this is nuts. It, something's going to happen. It doesn't feel right. So I called my real estate agent and I said, start selling everything. We had 22 properties at that moment, at that point when I said that. We got down to seven, and then 08, 07 hit. Unfortunately, the majority of those were buildings or various stages of construction. Four and a half million dollars of real estate went to one and a half million almost overnight. And we owed about two and a half. So we went from a million and a half, of them. if we had sold at that current value in the black, to a million in the red. Literally just about overnight. What do you do? Well, I was told by two bankruptcy attorneys to file BK. I had a problem. I still had an, a, a financial company that was my income. If I file the BK, I lose control of the company. So now we're talking about negotiating. And in 2008, I did a short sale when the bank said, what's a short sale? I had to educate one of their higher VPs to go back and figure out what a short sale was. Two years later, there was real estate agents advertising they were short sale specialists. Okay. We did foreclosures, we did settlements, we did all kinds of different things. That took about two years to unwind all of that. And I thought, phew, finally got out of that. My credit got s s s creamed, but I was out. And then I get a nice little letter from the IRS. You owe $256,000 in taxes. Oh, short sales. Why? Short sales. Short sales and settlements. I had negotiated a million dollars of debt. Debt forgiveness. Debt forgiveness, exactly. And they said, well, you made a million dollars. I said, no, I didn't. I lost a million dollars. Well, you owe, you owe taxes on it. I'm like, what? I'm a financial guy. I'm supposed to know this stuff. I wasn't just a financial guy. I was one of the top 10 IRA, 401k, annuity producers in the country, folks. We were doing seminars around, around the country, the lunch and dinner seminars and all that, teaching people how to enhance retirement and all that. I want you to know something. They don't teach us this stuff either. Okay. They teach us how, they teach financial advisors how to t sell financial products. Just like they teach real estate agents how to sell houses, right? 
I'm telling you like it is, okay? And I'm not saying this to be rude or mean. The person, you, if you have a financial advisor, he's probably a very nice person. That's great. I was a nice person too. But I didn't know this stuff either, okay? It pissed me off. I'm like, wait a minute. I've been doing this, doing it the what's I've been taught my whole life, the right way. I was a hard worker. I was top ten in the country. Again, I'm not saying to brag, but I was get, do, get making stuff happen. And here I get completely sideswiped, and I'm getting cream. By the way, I negotiated with the IRS for the next three years. They were more fun than the banks, by the way. And December of 2017, my wife and I just paid off our last bill to the IRS, and we are 100% debt free today. That was a goal of ours, and I think you understand why. <laughs> what I'm saying is, if that's a goal of yours, it can be done. The personal bank was part of a big part of that piece of helping us get to that point, and I'm going to share that with you today. I want you to understand this a little bit of my story where I came from, because I want you to understand I made mistakes along the way, and real, but I didn't realize there were mistakes at the time because I just didn't know any better. And the problem is, what I've found, have found these days, is financial literacy is one of the biggest problems in America today. Lack of it. We're just not taught this stuff. So I've made it my mission to learn these kinds of things. And what happened was it started about six years ago with the American Medical Association of all places. They contacted me about doing financial retirement planning seminars for doctors in Phoenix and Tucson. It was a pilot program it was, and they chose 15 advisors around the country. It was an honor to be chosen. And we had to go through a program and the first thing they taught us was the personal bank. And why did they teach us that? As they stated, when you're a doc making five, six, seven hundred K a year, you can't do an IRA, you make too much. You can't do a Roth, you make too much. What do you do? And you're getting creamed on taxes, right? This is what they do. And then I said, wait a minute, why aren't we taught this stuff? Well, you don't make enough. That was the answer. And most of your clients you deal with don't make enough. I said, yeah, but if I could show how somebody who made 50 grand a year how to, make le how to pay less taxes, wouldn't that be a big deal to them, just like the doc making half a mil? They're like, well, yeah, of course. Well, well, you get a bigger commission on the half milk on the bigger client. Okay, I get that. That's fair, right? But I got to thinking, remember, we had done all those seminars and all those workshops and all those, and we had 4,000 clients at that point who we met with regularly anyway, you know, doing reviews and stuff with our existing clients. How hard would it be to meet with our clients who we're meeting with anyway, share with them a way to reduce their taxes, gain control of their money, get more access? Guess what? We found it was really easy. <laughs> and guess what happened? They started saying, hey, this is incredible. Can you, you need to talk to my brother. You need to talk to my business partner. You need to, in other words, never in my career had I had a situation where people would volunteer referrals before I even asked. And that's what started happening. Then, one of my clients, I don't know if anybody knows Trish Williams by chance. She used to do the real estate trade investment circuit with, um, oh, can't think of the name now. It's one of the big names. Not Carl Sheets, but one of the other ones. But she used to do the whole, whole uh, if you said the name, I would know, you would know. But she became one of my clients. And she lives in Seattle. And she, Reaps, which is one of the largest real estate investment groups in the country in Seattle, she was one of the trainers for them and did, ran their, one of their monthly meetings. And she said, Ferris, you need to come speak to my folks. Her and her husband were building a $25 million apartment complex at the time. And they used the, this concept to help part, build, partly build their uh, apartment complex. You need to show this to my folks. This was about five years, four or five years ago. And I said, See, I said, Trish, I don't want to go to Seattle. It's cold. <laughs> I'm in Phoenix. She wanted me to come up there in the, in the winter. I'm like, why would I want to go there? She goes, no, you need to come up here. And so she bugged me for six months. Finally, I said, I said, okay, fine, I'll come up there. She had 60 real estate investors in a row. And when I got done sharing this, I got a standing ovation. It, and, and I'm a financial guy. I'm talking about finances and taxes. We don't get standing ovations, okay? <laughs> right? It opened my eyes to something new. I said, wait a minute. Here's a group of people out here. They're hungry for this knowledge and don't know much or little or nothing about it. So then one of them said, hey, I know folks in L.A., uh, you need to go talk to them. I've spoke to the LA RIA several times. I've been to Seattle now six times, and I'm going back up April 27th. They just re contacted me yesterday about a different group up there to come speak to them. And it just has gone from there. Vegas, Denver, here, 
And that's what's happened. And we've done zero advertising, zero marketing. And so I contacted a gal last week, uh, a marketing gal. I said, can you help us start doing some marketing? Because this thing's taken off without any marketing, but let's take it to the next level. And I've been told I need to write a book. I'm working on that. Some publishers. I mean, all kinds of fun stuff. That's kind of what's been happening. So it's a grassroots kind of thing. What I'm sharing with you is typically what high-end tax attorneys share with their high-end income clients. That's what I'm going to share with you today. And the reason you haven't heard about this, for the most part, or don't really know, is the financial advisors that work with this type of tool typically work with something called family offices. Does anybody know what those are? Few of you. A family office is typically where a family or a group of families have about 10 million in liquid assets or more, and they set up an entity called a family office. It's not it's a specialty entity like an LLC would be or a trust or anything like that. And there's tax reasons for doing so. And they have somebody who invests for them, basically. And that's and they're looking for tax deductions, right? One of the things they're looking for, okay? So unless you're working with a financial advisor who's familiar with family offices or corporate financing with like banks and corporations, which 99% of financial advisors don't do that stuff, right? They're not familiar with this either, just like I wasn't. Until, again, until AMA started coming to my attention. Then what happened, last year I'm sharing this personal bank concept at a business owner's meeting in Phoenix. A guy comes up to me. He says, we need a guy like you on the board of our bank. I later find out Ernie, he's a former treasurer of the state of Arizona, former chairman of the Arizona Corporation Commission, and he started 31 banks in his career. Currently has about a dozen in operation. And he sa I said, interesting. So anyway, I joined the board of the bank, and last fall, they elected officers. I'm now the chairman of the board. Now understand, I hate banks. In fact, when I was first approached about the idea, I said no. And my wife said something to me, it was very astute. My wife's very smart. When you get a chance to meet her, you'll, you'll know. She said, you know, wouldn't it make sense to be on the inside? I know you hate banks. I hate them too, based on our experience. But it wouldn't make sense to be on the inside. So that makes a lot of sense. So the whole board knows I hate banks, but I'm the chairman of the board. <laughs> okay? And by the way, I have learned a lot about how banks operate, including, I just shared with a gentleman here, about what happened in 2000 and uh, early 2007, why California, Arizona, Nevada, and, Ca and Florida real estate market tanked literally almost overnight. Does anybody want to know why? He's the only one, Adam's the only one that knows. You know what was the trigger? Derivatives. No. no. I mean, derivatives was the problem, but what was the tri trigger? Federal Reserve and FDIC, I just learned this a few months ago, at a board meeting, and Ernie, the guy I was telling you about, was in on that call when it happened because he owned several banks at the time. What happened was they said, hey, those four states are getting out of control, and they were. And FDIC, if the banks go under, who's, who's on the hook? FDIC. They were worried. So they said they notified the chairman of the board of each bank in those four states at noon and said at 5 p.m. today all residential lending, mortgage lending, will cease. And the moratorium stayed in place for three years. That's what happened. When you said it was getting out of control, did they mean that they were lending to too many people who weren't really qualified? All of that, right. The prices were getting out of control. Everything was going crazy. I sold one property three times for ten grand more, three times in one week in Phoenix, right before all that happened. That's when I said, this is getting crazy. We need to get out. I just didn't get out quick enough. And I remember saying back then to my wife, I said, there was a conference, this was back then in 07, I said this. There was a conference call that happened. Something happened. At that time, I couldn't put my finger on it. But I wasn't in on the call, and I don't know what happened. But I, by golly, the next time, I will be. I don't know how, I don't know where, but I will be. Okay? Well, guess what? Next time, I will be. By the way, one of our board members, anybody know a name John Burley? Does anybody know a name Robert Kiyosaki? Yeah. John Burley is Robert Kiyosaki's mentor. In fact, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he's one of the rich dads in the book. John Burley is one of the top real estate educators in the world. He's written best -selling, number one best-selling book, uh, uh, money, money, Habits of the, money Secrets of the Rich. Sold over a million copies. He's co-authored the book with Trump back in the 80s. Okay? 
I got to know John a couple of years ago, invited him to the board of our bank. He's on the tr he's a treasurer of our bank now. So I've gotten to know John really well. We've become buddies and learn a lot of stuff from folks like that. By the way, you want to change your future. I'm going to share with you a little. One of the other things I do, and I'm not saying these things to brag, but these are things that I said 10 years ago. I'm going to make a change. I was pissed. I know uh, I, I, can I teach a, uh, it's a college accredited course on financial literacy. Part of, and I was really excited. On ESPN, last, yeah, ESPN yesterday, I was driving to the airport yesterday, and on ESPN of all places, Sports Channel, they were talking about athletes when they first become professional athletes in college, they should teach them financial literacy because you know we all know most, most of them would go broke. They make millions of dollars and they go broke. They said they were talking about how they should teach them financial literacy. And then one of the guys on the, the announcers, you know, the, the commentator guy, he says, we should all get that. I didn't get in college, did you? And they're all talking about this. And then the one younger guy said, you know what, I'm hearing there's some, there's some things starting to happen in colleges where they're now starting to teach that. I'm part of that movement. And I was like, that's pretty cool. It's starting to be acknowledged that that's starting to happen. Financial literacy is a huge problem, okay? So, if you want to change your future, your combination, I'm going to give you guys kudos here, and then we'll get into some good stuff, is your combination of the books you read and the people you hang out with. Right? If you want to change your future, change the books you're reading and change who you're hanging out with. Okay? And hang out with people that challenge you. Hang out with people that are above your level, if you know what I'm trying to say. In whatever it is area that you want to be, you want to excel in. And guess what? You'll move up to their level. Not, you don't want to be the leader. They made me the chairman. I don't feel like I'm the leader of that group. But I'm working on it. <laughs> okay? So it's kind of fun. And I'm getting better and smarter and learning as we go. We all can continue to do that. Anyway, um, what I do teach people, one of the biggest wealth <coughs> secrets, and by the way, that's one of the biggest, that's one of the basic financial <coughs> literacy, that's, that's a truth for life. What do you read, who do you hang out with, right? That's a basic truth, okay? Another, a wealth, uh, wealth-focused basic financial literacy truth is how to think like a banker versus an investor. I'm going to talk about that one today, because that one's huge. I think I got a little credibility there. I'm the chairman of the bank, okay? You might want to listen. Oh, by the way, on the bank's pretty exciting. We're about a year from opening. It takes about two years to start a bank these days. You get the bank charters and everything, FDIC and Federal Reserve. And by the way, they check you out like nothing you've ever seen. They, they said, look, if you smoked weed in college, you better tell them. If you had a uh, parking ticket and you were 17, you better tell them. Because if you don't, they find out, they'll kick you off the board. I have never been through any kind of, like, scrutiny as I have with this, okay? So one of the things, if somebody tells you they're on the board of a bank, you know they're clean. I'm going to tell you that. They got no hidden uh, skeletons in the closet because they checked them out because you got to go through state and federal bank regulators, okay? It's the toughest thing I've ever had to do by far, okay? And I've got other licenses and stuff. Don't hold a candle to this, okay? Because as they put it, they call it a public-private um, partnership. Yes, we're a private bank, we're, an, we're a private business, but we're funded by FDIC, we're backed by FDIC dollars and Federal Reserve, right? So, anyway. Like, and so, we are going to be a very real estate investor friendly bank. This is John Burley, he's the treasurer. It's one of our focuses. There are not many real estate investor friendly banks left out there in this country. And we can do business anywhere. So, it might be a good idea to notice somebody on the board of a real estate family bank down the road. Okay? Anyway, there's what's important to me, my wife and daughters, and my princesses. She's the one doing the solos tomorrow, so got to, dad's got to be there. And uh, our older daughter was diagnosed with autism when she was four. She's now 15. Um, it's had its special challenges and rewards, blessings in our life. So it's, uh, that's, what, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing, because I'm building a future for them. Because dad has to, especially for Ralea, my older daughter, because we got to take care of her. Okay? She's not going to be able to take care of herself. Although she's doing awesome, don't get me wrong, okay? And that's what I do for fun. I'm a semi-professional bass trombonist, so. Uh, played in the military, college, paid for college, all that good stuff, so. I still play uh, jazz groups, churches, whatever, just for fun. Sometimes I get paid, sometimes I don't. I don't really worry about it. <laughs> so, that's what I like doing. All right, today we're going to learn how to enhance your financial life, Okay. We're going, to make, we're going to make a change. And by the way, some of you, I'm going to tell you, you should put this on your calendar. This is the day, circle it, this will be the day that your financial future changes. 
It's not going to change overnight, but you start taking steps in the right direction. It took me 10 years to get out of the hole, but was it worth it? My answer is yes. Okay? Is it worth it? depends on how big, a, how big a hole you dug. I've dug a big one. Okay? Most of you won't take that long because you didn't big, dig a hole that big. But understand, what's the definition of insanity? You're here for a reason, right? And here's where I'm going to come from. I'm going to treat you like adults. I'm going to treat you like big boys and girls. I'm not going to try to sell it. That's why I'm going to try to sell people this stuff. If I educate you and you understand how this works, you're going to pursue this and do this. And will I get paid and make a commission? Yes. Do we both win? Yes. Okay? It's that simple. So, if you, the more I educate you, the better you understand how to operate a personal bank and a private funding tool for yourself, the more likely you're going to do it, right? Yes. And you're going to have people telling you, what are you doing? Are you crazy? You're going to be like a salmon swimming upstream, aren't you? You already kind of are. How many people in Santa Barbara, it's Saturday afternoon, it's a beautiful day, right? You already are kind of odd because you're here <laughs> in a hotel room, and I mean that in a good way. To learn and improve your life and your family's future, and your family's future. Am I right? That's awesome. And kudos to you. Keep doing that. Education will never. You can never get that. Can never be taken away from you. Okay. So, what's the number one? By the way, biggest problem. I mentioned this. What's the number one cause of disease? Doctors will tell you that it's stress. What is the number one cause of stress? Financial problems. We all know that one. What's the number one cause of divorce? How many times, how many in the room are married? Okay. How many times did the wife or husband come home from work and say, gosh darn it, I'm pissed because you got too much money in the bank account? <laughs> <laughs> how many fights have you had about that? <laughs> it's never that way, is it? It's always the other way around. Right? So, the thing is, statistically, most of us were not taught financial literacy. Unless, we had, I say, if you had, unless you had a rich uncle that taught you, taught you this stuff, you just, I wasn't. I wasn't taught this stuff, okay? Historically, it was taught in the home. But what's happened? Well, Wall Street, through IRAs, 401ks, and the mutual fund industry, has basically hijacked that role, haven't they? Okay? They basically said to us, hey, give us your money. Let us manage it. We'll take care of you. <laughs> right? And hang in there for the long term and all that good stuff. Well, how well, how well has that worked for most people? We all know about the lost decade, right? We all know about... You remember the statement, my 401k turned into 201k? Remember that one? That one wasn't funny. I saw a lot of statements. And what if you were 60 years old, getting ready to retire, and your retirement just got cut in half? Folks, it wasn't funny. Now, fortunately for those people, the market has recovered. Thankfully for those folks. But at that point, did anybody know that was going to happen? No, there's blood in the streets. Nobody knew, right? So my point is, what about the next time? Will it happen again? Absolutely. Do I think it's going to happen in the immediate future? No. But will it happen again? Absolutely. Can you tell me when? Sooner than you think. Can you tell me how long? Can you tell me how far? Well, if anybody can, they're trying to sell you something, right? Nobody knows. We don't know what's going to trigger the next cycle. But the next cycle will come. Don't be surprised. By the way, will real estate have another cycle? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It does. Everybody heard of Bitcoin? Okay. Everything has cycles. Be prepared for it and understand that, okay? Anyway, by the way, there's my history, my career in this industry. Um, that's the S&P 500. That was a dot-com run-up. That 9-11 and all that fun stuff, that was a 45% drop. Mortgage run-up, 0809 was a 55% drop. And look what's happened since. Where do you think it's going? Down. I don't know. But there's going to be another cycle. Be prepared for that. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Okay. By the way, do schools teach financial literacy? No. How about uh, lenders? Of course not. No, they just want your payments. How about uh, you know Wall Street? No, they just want the fees, right? Management fees, right? You know, there's three ways basically to learn financial literacy. There's the school of hard knocks. That's the hardest one, right? Unfortunately, I got a lot of experience with that one. There's mentors. Wisdom is learning from other people's experience. By the way, today, when I think about doing a real estate transaction, who do you think I talk to? John Burley owns 2,000 single-family residences in Phoenix. He's been doing it for 30 years. 
I say, hey, John, I was thinking about this. What do you, what do you think? Or I know somebody said to me, recommended that. Because by the way, I speak for real groups all over the country. Do you think I get approached about any real estate deals? Mm -hmm. Every week. I shoot an email off to John. Say, what do you think? Have you heard anything about this? He's extraordinarily plugged in.